Give it all you've got, take your very best shot, and may the best team win. The time is now, the name of the game is action. Welcome to the world of Rod's Tabletop Hoops today. Uh, we are going to do a demonstration of how to create team envelopes for your favorite tabletop basketball, baseball, or whatever cards can fit into these little envelopes I've displayed down here. Now, you can see that I've got about three models here I'm going to display today of envelope. And the first one is just what I'll call sample A. And it is the Philadelphia 76ers from 1965-66. These were the first ones I created uh, probably way early last year. And uh, it doesn't even label what game it is for. These are PTG basketball envelopes. Because um, I didn't have any good ones that came with uh, the addition of these cards. And so, yeah, these, these cards fit directly into these little seed packets and I will talk to you about where to get these packets if you're interested in doing this project. Anyway, very simple design. Sixers found a team logo at Basketball Reference. Eastern Division first place. This is all designed through Microsoft Word and we'll get into that a little bit later in the show. Uh, here's a UCLA one from 73-74. Somewhat similar. I just got the team the year, the team emblem, the final rank, the record, how they did it in their conference. And that's section A, very simplified. This is going to be called section B. Uh, this has got a couple extra lines and a little bit more detail. Whenever you go into more detail, it's going to take you a little extra time to type up you know, and find the stats team batting average, team home runs, team earned run average. This is a baseball example, obviously, the 1960 world champion Pittsburgh Pirates. And look at how goofy that logo is. Also, baseball reference in this instance. You can see the 1960 Washington Senators done exactly the same way. And centering that print on the envelope is always going to be a trick. And so I'm going to try to also provide... Uh, probably on tabletop basketball board games, my Facebook group, um, some templates. So you might not have to do as much work. You might just have to say, oh, I like A, I like design B, and here's design C, which is the most complex of all three. This is one I did uh, relatively recently for replay basketball. And you can obviously see that Denver has team records, how many points they scored, how many they gave up, team field goal and free throw percentages. And I decided, because I hadn't played a lot of this season, to come up with a starting lineup and even a sixth man on the card. Obviously, when you start to add this much information, the font size gets a little bit smaller. Not as easy to read. And uh, so to put six players down there along with the records, it starts to get a little bit uh, more uh, busy on the on the envelope and as you can see this is my max envelope I just did these not too long ago many may recall my sorting of the 88 89 bank shot basketball uh, season of the NBA and of course I got the division first place all the points and I went as deep as seven guys on this team because Joe Bryan's game comes out with every player who played a single minute during the NBA season of 88-89, and it is true for every NBA season of cards he comes out with. So, I mean, you can make this into a payoff pitch if you're into baseball. Just swap out the emblem, change the name, and put the stats you want to put on there if you'd like. But that one's going to take the most time, and it once again, the font size gets a lot smaller, so there's pluses and minuses to it. But in this special case, I'm going to go seven. And even the centering of the uh, the type on the envelope gets a little bit tricky with my templates. And you will see that later when I print out a couple. As you can see, I ended up doing that, you know, for the entire league here. That's all 88, 89. There's replay right there. Um, all of these are just APA 1960. So you can see how nice they are to have the convenience of looking at your teams without having 
to dig through a bunch of cards, especially if you don't have original um, envelopes or envelopes that aren't in very good shape. That always becomes kind of arduous. The original APA baseball envelopes have nothing on them that describes the team or the year of the team or their team record. That's the minimum I would think you'd want for an envelope if you're going to have it done custom-wise. You'd want to know what place they finish in, what year the team is, and uh, you know, throwing in a team emblem doesn't hurt. So anyway, I'm going to do a little example today um, of I've, I've got some uh, teams. Usually I wait till I buy a season of cards before I demonstrate, but I do have this left uh, remaining from the last couple of years. This is NBA Players Association, uh, also known as Status Pro Basketball from about 1973. You can see that these cards are in envelopes that are pretty nondescript. Um, there's San Francisco for the San Francisco Warriors, Buffalo. I mean, they serve the purpose really well. But if you take a look at the cards themselves, and I'm going to pull up a team. I'm going to do an example with uh, the Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Lakers. And this person, whoever had the set before me, put the team uh, index. Uh, number of 16 at the upper right portion of the card. I didn't know that until I played a couple of games and realized that they assigned a team index. It was in the instructions to the game. And so I'm hoping to integrate a team index number on the envelope when I create a new envelope for these cards. And I think these cards will fit in these envelopes a little bit better than the ones that were provided me when I bought the, the, the cards. You can see that they're a little bit longer and they're just a little more arduous. This will be a nice fitting envelope fits the width of the card and the height of the card without issue. But anyway, let's take a look at what you get. I will show you exactly the website. I go to Amazon to get these things and I'll show you that website and post a link. But um, this is they come in these little packages like this. And I believe there are 20. They come in uh, units of 100. You get five little packets of 20. And that equals 100 here. And they're all back to back. That's the front of them. And on my printer, which I will show you later, you must put the the front, the envelope you want, the printed side down on my printer. You put them in there. And literally, I, my big tip of the day already will be print as few, put as few envelopes in that printing tray as possible. Otherwise, there's a tendency for the printer, at least an old 20-year-old printer like I, I've got, even more than 20 years old, uh, it'll tend to pull more than one envelope. It won't just it won't just snag the top envelope and go through the printer. It'll snag the stack of three or four. So I usually just put two envelopes, rest them rest them on the printer tray, and you will see this later on, and run it through the printer that way. But anyway, that's a smaller packet. This is about what twenty uh, look like right here, and uh, let's go take a look and see where I actually find those envelopes. Alrighty, uh, the title of these envelopes is 100 Pack Small Coin Envelopes, Self-Adhesive Craft Paper Seed Envelopes, Mini Parts, Small Items, Stamps, Storage Packets, Envelopes for Garden, Office, Wedding, Gift, uh, Brown 3.23 by 4.53. That pretty much gives you a search engine and it'll find anything envelope. So, uh, but these seem to work the right uh, way for me. One reason was a lot of the envelopes you see traditionally is have a real yellow, a stark yellow color. Uh, not as yellow as this yellow uh, background board I have for the Oakland Oaks, but just really kind of a uh, not very friendly color. So I like the muted color of these and it, they look yellow, but they actually show up a lot more uh, brown, brownish when you're uh, uh, playing and putting the uh, labels on. And I just think it's a nice, nice, more calm contrast. In addition, I was trying to find envelopes that were actually the right size for smaller player cards. And I'm going to throw into that uh, set of cards. I've done uh, PTG basketball, which is no longer really being sold these days, but I also have used that obviously for other other cards as well, including Bank Shot, and uh, it works for replay cards, and I think it'll work just fine for these Status Pro, or any Status Pro cards would probably work just, just wonderfully with this size. 
of envelope and you know they're not ultra high quality by any stretch of the imagination but a uh, regular price on these things as you can see down here is eight dollars and 99 cents per 100 so that will get you a few leagues done if you need to do just a, a season or two that don't don't have their own envelopes uh, i don't think envelopes are issued too much anymore since the days of of appa so this would definitely fill the need uh, for just for eight ninety nine for a hundred, I've bought hundreds of them, and I will show you probably my entire uh, boxes of collection <laughs> when I'm done uh, showing you how to print these out in my manner. This is not going to work for everyone. You probably uh, this will require Microsoft Word. Uh, it'll require, of course, these envelopes I have just described, and uh, a little bit of know how of how to use Microsoft Word. Although, like I said, I will post probably on tabletop basketball board games uh probably three different templates and i can i'll take requests for more so maybe you can just overwrite what i've already done if you're interested in trying this method on an inkjet printer i can't speak on behalf of people that use laser jet they probably got a better feeder than what my inkjet printer has but uh, we're going to go into that pretty soon and let's check out how this set of printed envelopes comes together at my workstation all right here we are at the workstation and i'm just doing a sample uh microsoft word document which could print out these pages properly now the key things to remember when you're doing a new document are to um let's do a new one just for the sake of it see if i can replicate some of this that i just figured out okay you go to blank document obviously and what you really want to do is remember that our width of our envelope is going to be 3.23. If you can see it right there, uh, the height is 4.53. And I think that only considers, I think, it only considers to the envelope and not the flap itself. So I measured that out as 4.78. So what I do, I put it in print mode and I decide, uh, Let's see, let's see. I got another one already set up here. Well, let's just go to the, the page on the on the printing of this blank document. Let's throw a few words in here. Let's let's use my um, my sample here. Basically the uh, font I've been using is Gil Sands MT, so you can use that uh, 14 point here, 16 point there. I grabbed the Miami Tropics, just grabbed it off the internet. You know, you, you do a copy and a paste you know, with any logo or you go to basketball reference or baseball reference if you're doing a baseball team. But anyway, I can take all of this information. I can put this on my blank document. And let's get out of the print screen. All this stuff, just pr fairly simple. And obviously that didn't turn out perfect. So you go to the home page and you center it all. There's a center key here if you know anything about uh, Microsoft Word and I don't know everything about it myself so um, our biggest issue here is setting up the page size so right now it's on eight and a half by eleven letter and what we're going to do is customize that page so how do we do that more paper sizes it says eight and a half by eleven well our width as we said earlier it's going to be three point two three inches and like I said, I measured it not 4.53, but 4.78, including the entire envelope. So that shrinks the document, something of that nature. The only other thing I remember I have to do is go back to home here. There's a, a spacing uh, option here, line and paragraph spacing. And you figure out what it takes to get the spacing proper. Let's see, I thought it was 1.0, but I've also got an issue here. My margins aren't very good. So what I have to do is go to the print. I can do some custom margins. And as I recall from another template I have, the top, uh, you just zero out everything else on these margins, I have top as 0.5, bottom is 0.3. And that's portrait, and then there, 
and they want to fix it and I just hit ignore because I want it like that and you can see that we're at least somewhat centered now. Uh, now I believe I've got the capability going back out of the print screen to go down and I can see how far I can go down and usually I just try to go to the near lowest doing that maybe one up for that. So anyway I hope I haven't confused everybody but these are kind of interesting ways workarounds. You can make this thing a little bit bigger like your tropics but once it leaves the screen on the print screen you know it's not going to print on the next page. So just figuring it out like that pulling this information using Gil Sands MT14 for the top line 16 for those putting in the relevant data you want to put in to your uh, printout. Uh, what, what I like to do is I like to take some uh, just pieces of note um, printing paper that are the same size as the envelope and I will go over to my printer and put them in place and I will show you how to do that. Alright, excuse the weird lighting situation here. We got a little light going on to the HP. I've got an HP 5550 printer. This thing's circa 2001. And what I'm going to do is insert some sample papers that are the same size as the envelope. As you can see, this is kind of roughly where the, the flap on the envelope would be. The equivalent of looking at this envelope here and saying, well, that's where it flaps over. It's just an estimate. We're, these things aren't even cut perfectly either. They're on some scrap paper that I have. But in this printer situation, you got the bottom tray here. And I face it flat, printing side down. And so then I just go like that. And I've only got two pages in there. I hope it works. I'm going to try to see how that Miami Tropics, Tropics will come out. Because this once you line it up once, you can pretty much do your entire league of teams without too much... You know, you just copy that file and you use the next team and you print it out. So we're going to see how that prints out. Miami Tropics, attempt number one. This is really off the cuff. We'll see how it goes. And we're off to the races. We'll see how this sample page prints out. It'll give us a good indication if our information is toward the center of the envelope and not including the flap on the envelope. So, like I say, once you get the template correct, you're pretty much gold for anything you want to do. And this took me a long time to do, so I'm just kind of backtracking and, and figuring out how I have to do it. Like I said, I'm going to include some templates that are already pre-done, so hopefully take that work away. And we'll see, it's coming out pretty quick. How does this look? So you can see, it's a small, it's not a lot of writing. You can see that there's, you know, a, a thumb down there and a less than a thumb there. Like, just a little bit more down there, so if you wanted to adjust this a little bit, you can even add a, uh, a point space or do a little uh, carriage return basically and make those bigger and make it perfect. But that, for a first effort, that's not too bad. That's how it would look on the envelope. If you put, put the envelope right there, it would not be too bad. Let's just use the back side so you can see where the flap is. But yeah, there's a little more spacing there than there. I'd probably take a make another space up there of maybe 10 point or 12 point and then everything would work. So that looks like a pretty good start. But anyway, uh, I'm going to go to one of my templates and we're going to print out a Los Angeles Lakers uh, print from 1972-73. So I'll show you how that is all set up. And that's what I will probably put on my tabletop basketball board games uh, group as a file and uh, that'll make it easier for anyone who wants to just go into Microsoft Word and not have to think too much. And here we go. All right, we're back at the, ho the home screen here of the all-in-one desktop computer and I have a Lakers one from 7273. Basically, I took some of my PTG envelopes and uh, you know, I'm going to run a test on this, I think, just to see how close it is, because I don't really like to, to uh, waste envelopes. So I'm going to do a test off screen, and uh, let me print it out, and I'll, I'll see how close we are. I've added the status pro name to the top. 
Uh, I've also added there's a team index for all the teams in uh, NPBA Status Pro Basketball. Every team gets an index. Every once in a while, a fast action card comes up and it's, it's based on the team index and the better teams get the higher index. I think they're probably, they're nearly one to 17 for all the 17 teams in the Lakers. Uh, I think they're ranked the second best team to the Boston Celtics with their 16 rating. So I added that to this card to customize it. That's really all I need. I'm going pretty simple with this. And so uh, all I had to do was add this line, this top line to all the uh, old PTG ones. And I just made another copy of that entire file. And so this is going to make this run pretty easily if I decide to follow through with 17 teams. So I'm going to do a sample one and I'll show that off in one second here. Alrighty, well there's the sample that I just printed out of the Los Angeles Lakers and much like my Miami Tropics, it just seems it's a little bit high on the top. Not too much, maybe just one uh, carriage or turn down, maybe another 14 point line. If I decide to put that at the top, then I can kind of line it up a little bit better. Well, I've already got lines up here that are already, what are they? That's an 18 for that line. That's 18 for that line, and that's 18 for that line. So just be ready. This will have, uh, this tempo will already have some built-in lines. But I think based on the simplicity of the information I'm providing here, I could probably go up another, just grab one of these 18s and make it maybe 20, 28 or 26. What do we got? If I want a whole 10 points, would that make a huge difference? So I'm taking it way down to here. You can see at the bottom, but it doesn't print out that way necessarily. So let's do another sample one and I will show that one off as well. Okay, it's an ever so subtle change right there. You can see that the that this one went down about 10 points and that's almost right because if you put a thumb, um, you can't even see that. Show it here. Um, here you had a little more than a thumb and less than a thumb going to the envelope. I'm using my rough uh, thumb and thumb distance there and it looks a lot more equal with the 10 extra points. So I might roll with that. Let's move over to the printer. And uh, I think we have I think we nailed it with just very few uh, wasted pieces of paper. So let's check that out. The printer will tell the truth. We'll find out. All right, what I'm going to do down here, as before, we're going to pop this stuff out, take this out of the tray, and insert, like I said, my rule of thumb with envelopes, not with paper. Paper doesn't matter, but envelopes, they, they get a little sticky to each other. So I'm only going to have a one envelope buffer underneath there. And what we're going to do is going to print one out right here. Once again, face down. And uh, I just rest that in there until I can feel it kind of hit a stop. Fix that right there. Pop that in there. And then I'm going to hit the print button on the computer. And I was noting the computers don't want to say that we're outside of the print margins and everything. I just say go for it. Don't don't let the, the warning sign get you because generally you're not printing all the way to the edges and you're not going to be out of bounds based on the parameters we've set on this printer. And just thinking about it right now. Let's see if we got a good looking Los Angeles Lakers team envelope for Status Pro 1972-73. And it's almost done. And these are the cards we're going to stuff in that envelope. And we'll see if it came out right, see if it came out straight. Every once in a while they're crooked. So there you have it. Do my little quick... I'll do my thumb measurement after I get the... A 
top done. But anyway, I can put a full thumb at the top, basically a full thumb at the bottom. Um, envelope looks fairly straight. I think there may be a slight, a slight tilt. I mean, it's just, let me take a look at that. Eh, it's fairly straight. So that is envelope number one. You can immediately just grab your cards, put them inside, and I've got 16 more of these to go if I choose to do so. But anyway, a pretty sharp looking envelope. Um, this is HP 5550. This is an old machine. Uh, I hope that the newer uh, ink jet printers can do the same type of job. Probably can, probably can do it better. But uh, using those little coin slash seed slash stamp envelopes, you too can have some envelopes that look like this. Anyway, if you have any questions, just let me know. Like I said, I think that one's got a little tilt to it, but I can always do another one because I've got plenty because I buy these uh, envelopes virtually every time I get a new season of cards. So anyway, that has been a short tutorial on making your own team envelopes for tabletop basketball, tabletop baseball, tabletop football. I'd say this works with APA, PTG, Bank Shot, just a number of games that have the smaller card status pro for sure. So, and it makes them much easier to reference and you organize them in your own box and you know where they're at and you don't have to sift through a bunch of cards. So anyway, this has been Rod showing off this tutorial on Rod's Tabletop Hoops. Here is just a look at all of my customized envelopes. They range from PTG over there, 1970 NCAA, 66 NBA and beyond, tons of PTG, a little bit of replay showing the Baltimore Claws, Knicks in 88-89 bank shot onto fast break and I have a ton of that with a different shape of envelope. We start in 86 here, we got 74 Houston. Homebrew of 61 St. Louis Hawks, 76 Jazz Warriors of 75 Champions, Kansas City Kings, more fast break custom envelopes, 78, 79, 83, 81, 80, 81, and finishing off with a couple APA baseball seasons. A lot of these are copied cards, 1960, 65, 70, 73, and 75 and those are not custom envelopes. So there you have it. A quick look at my custom envelope collection. All of this was done in the past two years. Took some work, but it's well worth the effort.